Look at this beautiful butterfly. Consider yourselves lucky because only very few people in the world have seen her. It's because she is so rare and so elusive. She is the Kinabalu birdwing butterfly. This unique butterfly is endemic to Borneo and known from one particular site, Mount Kinabalu. Why this is so, no one knows yet. It even boggles the scientific mind of one of the world's most experienced entomologist, Dr. Stephen Sutton, who still cannot figure out why this butterfly species is largely distributed in the harsh environment between 1,500 to 2,000 meters above sea level on the sacred mountain. It is a paradox because butterflies only fly in the sunshine. So what is the Kinabalu birdwing doing in the worst part of the environment? An exciting part of the work has been the work being done by uh, a Dutch student um, at Wageningen University. He's uh, looking at the relationships between the, the, the four species, which are the Kinabalu birdwing, three other species closely related, and he's looking at the uh, evolutionary relationships um, by sampling the DNA from each of those uh, species. And the question is, why is uh, the Kinabalu birdwing confined to the cloud forest? There's another species closely related, uh, which is really common and widely distributed all over Borneo, uh, in the lowlands. And there are two other species which are a bit sort of in between. They're not uh, very common at all, but they, uh, they are around. Why, why, how do they coexist with the really, really successful uh, lowland one? And it, it, it almost looks as though, I mean, just to speculate, that the Kinabalu birdwing has been excluded from the lowlands by the more successful in competition um, widespread lowland species. So it's been, as it, as it were, it's, been, it's, it's confined to the cloud forest. The Kinabalu birdwing was first discovered in 1892 by a German-born Danish natural history collector by the name of Johannes John Waterstrad. He made the discovery when visiting the Pinosuk Plateau of the southeast slope of Mount Kinabalu. He collected birds, orchids, butterflies and moths for several European collectors, including Otto Stauninger, who was part museum curator, part learned professor and part successful insect dealer. From a batch of six specimens, Stauninger described the new species of birdwing butterfly, Troidus andromache. After the discovery, Overseas expeditions to North Borneo from time to time obtained specimens of the butterfly for museums and private collections. Many came to Borneo to collect it, but nearly all returned without it because of its rarity of encounter and the difficulty of taking specimens. It is for the same reason that there was no focus on scientific study of its life, history or abundance. There have been no published details of these except for one publication by Matsuka in 2001, and it was in Japanese. Even records of definite sightings are hard to come by. The mystifying reputation of the birdwing makes it almost a holy grail that captivates the imagination of eccentric butterfly enthusiasts around the world. 122 years after its discovery, Dr. Sutton, who is a fellow of the Royal Entomological Society UK and a fellow of the Royal Geographical Society UK, cited the magnificent butterfly on the mountain and got the international community of scientists and butterfly lovers excited. When word got around about his discovery, the Swallowtail and Birdwing Butterfly Trust a UK-based organization which is the only one in the world tackling the threats to butterflies on a global basis, commissioned him to study on the conservation status of the butterfly. Well, one of the key things we found out is at last we have been able to breed through uh, the and work out the life cycle of the uh, Kinabalu birdwing butterfly. 
um, before we didn't really know which uh, caterpillar, which larva, and which uh, pupa belong to that species or one of the other three species of um, related bird wing which occur in Borneo. And uh, so now one of our homestay operators has actually managed to find a young larva on his own uh, little small holding. Uh, and he's managed to breed it through so that we know where the what the small larva looks like, the big larva, uh, the pupa, and then bred through an adult. So now the life cycle is confirmed and it confirms work done previously uh, by uh, a couple of Japanese um, collectors who were studying this uh, and published it in Japanese. So we have had to find it quite difficult to follow. Well, the reason it's so important to know the life cycle and what pupa turns into what uh, adult, uh, which species, is that uh, you, you want to know if you're going to be breeding the rare one, uh, you need to know uh, which uh, caterpillars you're supposed to be uh, growing up, which ones you need to look after. Part of the study commissioned by the Trust was to look at methods to build a population to compensate for centuries of loss of native forest habitat. And they added a third aim, that is to encourage retention of the pristine mountain forests of Borneo as a resource for the bird wing and for sustainable tourism income stream based on providing opportunities to photograph this rarely encountered and elusive species, which Dr. Stephen and his team think should rightly become an icon of Sabah's rich natural heritage. These stars are continuing. Protection and preservation of the mountain forest is important to ensure that there is always food plants for the butterfly caterpillars to feed on. And here is Alim Byun, former research officer of Sabah Parks, explaining what the food plant is. Uh, first of all, what this vine looks like. Oh yeah, actually this is the, the main trunk of the um, Astrochia plants. This is actually a type of um, a scrambling plants that grow up uh, to the to the canopy. So this this is the leaf. Right. But uh, for this mature plants, actually it's very hard to see the yes. the, uh, the leaf because mostly high up in the tree. Yep. So that's why um, we are lucky because I took one um, young uh, suit. And so from the underside, yeah. what what's the distinctive? Yeah. yeah, actually, it's very, very, uh, it's very, very clear and very particular uh, uh, kinds of plants compared to the uh, other vine. For example, you can see the the vein here is more clear. And they all yeah. come out from the base. Yes, uh, they all come out from the uh, from the base. Right. And then the shape also is more distinct because more smooth. Yeah. Yes, more smooth and yeah. it's a little rough actually. And it's it, sort it's of beneath the the leaf. Fairly heart-shaped the, as well, yes. isn't it? Yes. yes. So this is the, the uh, main plant, we think, coming yeah. out here. Yeah, this is the and main branches. Plant. Yeah, and then now they had formed... Um, so a little shoot coming uh, out A little here. shoot, and uh, there's another second shoot. And uh, I think it's for just survival. And this is a mature plant because it's... Um, We've just found some seed capsules on it. Oh yes, growing out of the uh, trunk. Actually, uh, actually, it's definitely this is a totally matured plant. Right. Because um, just now that we uh, found the uh, dried um, uh, fruit, it oh, takes right. to yes. the uh, main plant. Oh right. Yes. Yes. Okay. And so this goes where? No. Uh, yeah. Actually, this is um, you mean the, the plant? Yeah. This is um, scrambled high up into the uh, canopy. So this is quite a tall yeah, tree. It's, it's, yeah. quite a, it's quite a tall tree. It's almost, um, it's, uh, almost 10 meters, it's almost 50 meters high. And, and we don't know, but we suspect that like a lot of these canopy things, they go up and then yes. they spread out yes. across the top of the canopy. Yes. So probably this one's doing the same thing. Oh, yeah, because uh, they are, you know, uh, to catch the sunlight. So yes. that's why they yes. covered the, the canopy with right. the tall tree. And this is quite exciting for this uh, Kinabalu birdwing project yeah. because this is the source of uh, 
where we get seeds mm -hmm. from and then we can uh, grow the seeds up mm -hmm. into plants and plant them around the homestays, the, the caboons, the gardens and small holdings of the homestay owners and then uh, that will probably attract the female butterflies to come down out of the forest and lay their eggs there and then the, the homestay owners can have um, uh, bird wings actually breeding on their um, on their homestay areas and they can then uh, invite photographers and people like that from overseas to see this pretty well unique butterfly which is just really this is its only stronghold in the world, just round here. Uh, so that's uh, very good news. It's a very misty wet yeah. day, but we found it. Other than his supporters from the UK, the Rotary Club of Kota Kinabalu came on board to help in the mission. Uh, we, we came in, the Rotary Club of Kota Kinabalu came in, uh, asked them to plant this uh, larval food plant mm -hmm. so that uh, it will attract the bird wing butterfly and uh, hopefully the, the tourists will come and see see what what the village can offer mm. while all this is good the elusive bird wing butterfly is racing against time for survival it is at risk from ongoing forest clearance from agriculture and tourism development notably in the remaining forests outside the Kinabalu National Park these forests are either privately or community owned. Slash and burn clearings for growing of hill rice, vegetables and fruits for home consumption are now being enlarged to grow pineapples and Arabica coffee as cash crops. The rate of forest clearance continue to increase, albeit at a slow rate. This is a typical human nature conflict that Dr. Stephen and his team are trying hard to resolve but the problem apparently appears to be much larger. The other thing that has been really uh, intriguing to find out is something quite new. I was just looking at maps of Borneo and about a, a third of it is quite mountainous. But if you look at it, you find that very little of that mountain mass is above 2,000 meters. Now, the zone in which uh, the Kinabalu birdwing, it's, it's a cloud forest species. It likes it where it's, or if it doesn't like it, it's been forced into an area of um, cold, wet, and miserable conditions, which is quite surprising. A butterfly would expect to be in the sun, but this one is in one of the least sunny habitats in the world, really. Um, the reason it's important to know that there is very little forest above 2,000 meters in Borneo is because climate change is already showing that there is a temperature rise in this uh, cloud forest zone. It's been measured and published. So we're, we're, we, we do know it's happening. Now, if it goes on for decades, maybe it'll have to be longer than that, but if it goes on too long and we're unable to halt the temperature rise globally and, in, and therefore locally as well, then we'll find that the, the forest cannot survive between 1,000 and 2,000 meters. It's too hot and too dry. And therefore, in geological time, what would happen and has happened over many parts of the world lots of times is that the forest kind of hitches up its skirts and moves upwards. The problem here is that above 2,000 meters, there's nowhere to go. So basically, if the temperature rises too much and the forest can no longer survive, the cloud forest, uh, between 1,000 and 2,000 meters, um, the butterfly will have nowhere to go and become extinct. And that will also be true of any other, um, any other plants and animals which are sort of specialized, adapted to the cloud forest zone. So that's a big future problem to worry about, like so many other problems to do with climate change. Butterflies somehow enjoy a romantic relationship with us humans. Here perhaps lie the hope for the bird wing butterfly's future, that the younger generation would have a greater appreciation of its existence and place in the entire ecosystem. 
Their understanding in the internetness of all things will be crucial to the survival of this mysterious species. Local girl Debbie from Kampung Kiao Nulu expresses it well. To me, as a younger generation, the forest is very important to very important to us and also the bird wing butterfly. Come to think about it, the survival of the bird wing butterfly would contribute to our own. At least when the habitat is left undisturbed, we can slow down the effects of climate change as a result of forest clearings. That said, we humans can say that we too owe our own survival on this planet to this very beautiful Kinabalu birdwing butterfly. <laughs>